Hey, what's up, man? YouTube viewership, what's up? Anybody listening to this on SoundCloud, man, I really appreciate that as well. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the comments and let me know below if you agree with some of these awards, if you disagree with them, who would you put in a spot? That's pretty much uh, what I want in the comment section. But first, the music going into this. And my guy Garrett just dropped a new album, man. Make sure you guys check this out. Garrett is on all streaming platforms right now. Garrett's no lies and cut ties, man. That's my guy. One of the first, like, real good man players. I started playing with him like a man no way. And he was really tough. And he was in the community. He was, like, in that tight-knit circle. He showed me a lot about man and made me a better man player. So definitely, uh... Definitely went out there and want to support my man Garrett and his music, man. Hopefully one day we can get one of these one of these songs on that there Madden soundtrack. That's pretty much what we we strive to get. But this is the Needed Podcast, episode 29, MCS Awards. That's what I want to do, man. I saw a lot of people posting. A lot of people posting that, uh, you know, they wanted to talk about, you know, they were posting their MCS Awards who was uh, the best player, who was the best defensive player, who was the best offensive player, so on and so forth, man. And for that, I pretty much, I made some nominees. I made some uh, just options for the people to vote, man. And there was a lot of people that commented about different uh, different people they would like to see in those particular categories, man. So I hope this stream is going to be interactive. I hope this podcast is interactive. If you're listening to this on YouTube or whatever platform you're listening to this, Every Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern, man, twitch.tv slash dub dot. You can check this podcast out live. Been doing it for 29 straight weeks now. And what's good, I do want it to become more interactive, whether I'm going to have more people call in or, like I said, I'm reading the chat as I go so I can see you guys talking with me. This this needs to be interactive, man. Without you guys' support, I really can't continue to do this, man. So I definitely need help and that nature. And, uh, yeah, so let's... I, I honestly, I was really pleased about the way the MCS season ended. I really was. Um, uh, it it was obviously was a rough year to start, but uh, I feel like Man Bowl was very successful, and it was a lot of talk about their streaming numbers and the viewership numbers. And uh, as far as view botting the stream is something that I have asked for, and we have all pretty much asked for. For a long time, you know, if Mutt has, has these capabilities, if all these different people had these capabilities to make their stream look more attractive, why not do that? And whether or not they did that or not, I think it's all positive thing. I think the way the Madden, the MCS year ended in Madden 19 was definitely a positive. Uh, shout out to Legally Good with the sub. So it definitely was um a positive note after such a dark year. Uh, so it definitely kind of gave us a little bit of momentum going into Madden 20. And uh, I just really don't... It's easy to hate on Madden. I feel like it's the cool thing to do to hate on Madden on every social media platform. It's easy to do because you have so many supporters that are miserable with the game and are miserable with, with a bunch of different reasons. Whatever it may be, you have so many supporters when you hate on Madden. It's kind of the easy stance to take. Whereas, you know, and I don't think that this was a, a, a time to hate on Madden, if you understand what I'm saying. I think the MCS was great. It was nothing but positives. Obviously, would have loved a different, uh, a different outcome in the last game. I mean, but we've had some amazing games, both on ESPN and NFL Network. So I mean, every once in a while, it's just the nature of sports, nature of Madden. It really. Uh, and see, Eric Rayweather, there he is. Being negative gets easy attention. Why? Because crabs in a barrel. They all want to feel miserable together. And when they have a leader of the miserable leader to point out this sucks, this this is bad, this is bad, that is it's the easy person to flock to, you know. And, and the MCS was definitely, it ended very well. Um, as far as format, as far as money, all that things, we're definitely going to continue to cover that in the future. We have about, I, I, was, I was just in the shower when I got done working. I figured to myself, I said, you know, Madden comes out at the end of July, so I have about two and a half months of podcast to fill with a bunch of different things, you know, a bunch of different content, so we're obviously going to have huge format discussions, we're going to have huge Madden 20 discussions, man, it, and I feel like every time you start a show about Madden, that's kind of where it goes, because that's what we really want to talk about, but have to make it a special show, definitely going to have some guests on for both format and it's kind of a Madden 20 wish list, definitely some shows on that. But like I said, man, I just want to go over who I think were uh, 
the best players this year uh, in the MCS, like who had, uh, you know, made their mark, so to say, uh, and really won these awards. Like I said, I really want this to try to be as interactive as possible. So if you guys, anything you guys want to say about these men, I, I really, it could really help me a lot to do that for you guys to uh, keep. Uh, how am I going to do this though? For you guys to keep helping me out push through this with some ideas and everything, man. So, shout out to all you guys that actually attend this this podcast. I tell you, Tuesday, 7 o'clock, I'm here, man. Alright. So, I mean, I'm of, I guess I'm of the minority as far as Madden is concerned this year in that I don't think it's great. I don't think the game is great, but it's certainly not, uh, it's certainly not that terrible. It's certainly not epically bad. Like it's it's kind of being drawn like that. I, I don't think it's that that awful. Uh, but like I said, I want to go ahead and see these awards. I, I saw a lot of people posting. It's always a fun thing to do to look back on the year and see who stood out in these particular categories. Right now, I have best player. I have the best game of the year. I have the breakout player of the year. I had most disappointing season. Best offensive player. Best defensive player. I thought about doing best plays. I thought about things like that, but it's just so many plays. I have an idea, and I hope you guys do too. I have an idea of the best defensive plays this year and the best offensive plays. and The the ones that just resonate in my mind, I already know which ones I would pick for that. So as the show continues, man, think about what could be the best defensive play in MCS this year or the best offensive play. Definitely with some great ones uh, that, that, that really stood out to me, but I know I know my answer, and my answer were pretty easy uh, going forward, but these are, this is pretty much, this is pretty much my, uh, like I said, yeah, best player, best defense, best offense, breakout player, most disappointing season. If you're listening to this, I'm just on my Twitter feed, if you can follow me on Twitter, Twitter, uh, twitter.com slash dub.w, the links are below, no matter what platform you're on, but, um, uh, pretty much, uh, the first one is best player. This one is pretty much uh, no doubt about it for me. Uh, Journey Farm, I mean, Journey has elevated himself, I mean, even off the last two years and really the last, um, uh, the last shoot, even in Madden 17 when he couldn't compete, Journey was still really tough to play against. I remember that, you know, when he was 16 years old, so it definitely was uh, tough to play against. So, um, but this year, he, he has uh, just almost had pretty much a real similar season to he did in Madden uh, 18, where he had one belt and lost in the finals one time. This time, he won the Madden championship, uh, the bigger belt than the DC belt last year, and actually lost. It was kind of the reverse year that he had. So you talk about man in two years competing, has made four finals and has two belts. I mean, that's super impressive. Uh I mean, just the percentage of, like, tournaments. I mean, he's sitting at, what, 25% of the time he wins the belt. And 50% of the time he's in the finals in the last two years. When he's been able to compete, Journey has been in the finals 50% of the time when he's able to compete. I don't know. Skimbo's, uh, Skimbo's got two, one year. I mean, Skimbo's not at 50% in the finals, you know. So, the Skimbo still, as far as, like, all-time MCS player, Skimbo still has Journey because he has three belts, uh, more money and everything, but it goes to like three and a half years competing compared to two. You know, uh, yeah, Journey is, it does have two belts and could have four, and I've said that about Skimbo before. Skimbo has three belts, and I feel like he could have six, you know, because he lost so many finals, so many tight games, and not even the finals, but just even the tournament I won, I felt like he was the best player, you know, and, and that's that's pretty much just like you say Journey could have four belts. I feel the same way about Skimbo. So, but this year, I mean, there's no doubt about it. Journey to be in two finals, win the last one, I mean, pretty convincingly the whole tournament. His group play were definitely battles between some serious, and if you watch the Bugs game, it was definitely a toss up. Bugs definitely had some unfortunate plays go against him to get Journey to get that win, but he won nonetheless. And just took the single elimination of that Madden Bowl just with ease, honestly. Uh, so, Journey, I think, is, is a no doubt about it, is, is the, the number one player this year. Uh, I don't think there's really any argument for anybody else. 
Uh, Skimble definitely started the year really strong, winning the Vegas tournament. Uh, disappointed in clubs, disappointed in draft champions, and then uh, the last, you know, he made. A, I guess he made a little bit of run in the Man Bowl Final Four. That's really good for sure. And yeah, Pavin. Uh, yeah, when you really think about, it, I think at the end of the day, Kip said Pavin, and if you think about Pavin, might have won the most money. I really don't know exactly. I reached out to Donnie Moore to hit me with the stats. And, you know, he's heavy stat man. Uh, so. I could honestly see how Pavin could have won the most money. Uh, I would, I would still take the the Madden Championship and the uh, and the finals. Yeah, he won a lot. He won the most. Yeah, that's what I figured because that that hundred k. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, I mean, you could argue that ultimately his year was better, mostly because of the money. You know, if the money was the same, I would still take Drenny. Uh, so. Like I said, other, other than the money is definitely journey. But Pavin, this and this is a lot of times when you put stuff on Twitter. As you see, if you're listening to this, it's 75, 75% journey, 19% skimbo. Most of these people, followers that we have in the man community, really don't know Kratobin or Pavin, especially because they both popped up this year for the most part. But journey and skimbo, I, I really think skimbo has 19% because he's skimbo and people know his name. But uh, that, that's where it comes down to. Like, you really, people just clicking buttons, honestly. Yeah, the, that's what I say. The poll, the polls are really just popularity at this point. Uh, but like I said, I think Journey definitely player of the year. I think Pavin. I think you're right. Pavin probably definitely second if we had a choice. Uh, and then third, shoot, I, I I think third you gotta probably still go Skimbo. Final four and a belt. Or Kurtobin, I guess he did final four and a belt, or and he did pretty good in the Man Bowl. All similar years uh, between Kurtobin and Skimbo, but Journey, like I said, I can't say enough good things about him. Uh, and watching him play is impressive to me. Like it's just it's a, it's just uh, it's just different enough to where he's super unique, you know. And then, all right, the next topic I want to go to is game of the year. Now I know there's probably a lot of games, and there's a lot of games honestly that are really exciting that aren't necessarily um, with the best players playing them. Because sometimes I see when I see like the super elite players play. It's really not that many mistakes. It's not that many. They don't take as many chances and so on and so forth. Uh, for me, I uh, like I said, Skimbo and Spoto, the second one where they were capping, probably, uh, you could say the most entertaining. But for me, I, the, the Mo Clef game was pretty crazy. It really, and for me as a person that, that likes Madden, the Mo Clef game blows the Skimbo Spoto game out of the water. I mean, it's about Spoto and Skimbo was entertaining. Like, that second quarter, though, when it was between Spoto and Skimbo, if you haven't watched this, man, check it out. Uh, Compton187 YouTube has all the Madden games this year. He's done a great job with that since, since not Madden 17, like the end of Madden 17, he started getting all the games. But for me, like, that second quarter of the Skimbo-Spoto game was definitely all that. Second half... <laughs> Once Skimbo capped, he didn't score again, so that got really dark. But the Mo Clef game really had it all... I mean, and they, the other ones I have on there, Strafing and, Strafing and Drag was really good. At that point, I think Strafing was up 35-7 to 7 or 28 to nothing or something. And then Drag came all the way back, and Strafing had to make a last-second drive to get a field goal. So that was another game that a, a lot of times when you have polls like this or you have you got to think about the whole year, you kind of forget about the stuff that happened early in the year, whether it be the Man Classic or whether it be, um you know, even Club Series. was kind of, you know... I mean, now we think about it, it was kind of four months ago, you know, so it's a little bit different. Uh, and then, yeah, Crush for his joke, that's a good one, Uncle Rico says in the chat. Crush for his joke was definitely entertaining. Kind of similar, if we really think about the year, the Crush for his joke was kind of similar to Skimbo vs. Spoto in that once the one person took the captain a little bit too far, shit kind of went downhill. And that's what happened to Crush, and ultimately that's what happened uh, to Skimbo as well, so... And Joe Rice in some series, uh, that was a good game. Probably the – is that the biggest fluke that happened this year? I'm, I'm going to throw, throw you guys out there another question. Is that the biggest fluke that happened? Was that pick that went through some series that could have been a pick six? As I think about all the fluky plays, uh, I really don't know. I'm not going to tell you guys that I have an answer for that. But when it comes to fluky plays, uh, that's the number one play that I think of this year. 
you know, as far as somebody getting cheated or some, something going really negatively for one person was the pick that some serious kind of went through his body. And he got a pick animation kind of right next to the receiver. Could have been a pick six. Uh, but then Journey for his Kratobin, I mean, that's one that, I mean, doesn't get a lot. It wasn't great. But anytime you have an overtime game end on the last play, you know, an 80-yard run, whatever it was, anytime you get overtime overtime for the whole belt, that's pretty cool. So I feel like an overtime game, walk-off, touchdown, That's I feel like that game was pretty intense. I felt like that game was good. Uh, that, that was dope, man. Uh, I don't remember Beast Mode's fumble. I don't remember. I don't remember that. That was not... I don't know that one. Um, then we're going to go to... Um, the next one I have on here is Breakout Player. My four... Uh, whatchamacallit? My four nominees for this one is Kratobin, who won a belt. Clef, who won a club series and was one of the... Clef was just, at the end of last year, was on Twitch playing. And he was the guy that, you know... You're only good because it's the end of the year, blah, blah, blah. And as much as the MCS has been successful this year, I mean, Clef is a case of where I think we could all agree Clef is a top 10 Madden player this year. If anybody made a list, he'd probably 1,000% be on everybody's list. And he didn't make the final 16. Uh, but that's another format topic. But uh, And I think going from last year where he was just everybody's favorite, uh, you know, June goon, as they say, and not really doing anything last year and not really competing in the MCS before this year. I thought he had a really good year. Uh, Pavin, obviously. I mean, like we just talked about, he could have been, he was second on, on, on the, you know, for player of the year. For him to just be, he won Raiders Club Series last year, which was obviously good for him. Lost a problem. And then for him to pop all the way up this year, win, win the biggest tournament of the year, really, and have success in some other ones, I think he really just, just from winning. Winning uh, what you call it? From winning club series, then all of a sudden winning a belt and making noise in other tournaments. So Pavin has forty percent of his vote. I think, I think he's a no doubt about it as far as breakout. And some serious to me, and the reason I put him up here is because I had no idea who this person was. The other three people, I I, I legitimately know who they are. Like Kratobin has always been in chats. That's all I know. Obviously, no live events. Clef was no live, just a chat money game player. And, and Pavin obviously plays played a lot. And, you know, they were all decent man players. Some serious. I had no idea who he was. I didn't know his name. Didn't know his gamer tag. Didn't know anything. And uh, for me, he was really impressive, especially the end of the year, to win last chance qualifier at an online tournament and really go against, uh, really had a tough road in that, playing all the same people. And when you play all the same people, it's kind of tough because, I mean, they're all kind of, I, I say it's kind of tough, but it, maybe it helped him out that he played three people, like, in the same group. But, you know, I just really had a chance to go. Uh, I really thought uh, he was definitely, definitely came out of nowhere. I didn't know who he was, and it, it, that's just how it is. You know, that that's why I put him on the list. It was some people, uh, obviously a lot of people said Spoto should be on the list. And for me, Spoto didn't, the breakout for Spoto, I, I don't know, maybe because I kind of, Spoto was on the level of Kratobin and these guys, like, as far... But he had just way more success. Even if it was just one event. I don't know why I just felt like... Maybe because I was actually at an event with him. And, like, I met him. You know what I mean? So, it's like, okay, this guy's kind of in the community. You know what I mean? He's a little bit higher in the community than, than three other guys were between Kratobin, Clef, and Pavin. I thought he had a little more success in the MCS before those guys. Because last year, if you remember, making a live event was only eight people. You know, so it was a little bit tougher to make live events last year. Actually, a lot better. Uh, a lot harder. And he made it, like I said, he made one with me. So I kind of already knew who he was. And uh, you could kind of predict he was still going to have success. And, and I just feel like, one, Pavin obviously was the only one here that made a live event last year. He just had so much success that he, I had to put him on a breakout. He broke out so much, uh, just so much higher, you know. So that's... So, uh, I mean, obviously, if you want to take off, if I was going to take off somebody, it would probably be Clef and then put Spoto in there, maybe. Uh, you know, but I feel it's picking cherries. Like I said, this award, Breakout Player of the Year, has to go to Pavin, in my opinion. You know, whatever you guys think, if you think somebody else should be Breakout Player, 
you can say whatever you want. Next topic is the most disappointing season. My season was disappointing. I didn't play. I didn't try. And I will tell you that's beyond disappointing for me. I was upset. I was sad. It was kind of, I don't want to say the word was depressing. It kind of was depressing. Because it was a lot of stuff going on. A lot of my friends, seeing my friends have so much fun in the scenes that I've been in for the last two years was definitely disappointing for me. You know, it's not even about the money or the competing. I really just, uh, it was fun to be around my friends at these events and, and be the center of Madden and to not be there. And looking at all the money they gave away, I would have made something, you know, uh, That's how I feel about it. So it's like, so it definitely was tough for me. Uh, and you brought up Joel. I don't know how much Joel. I don't think Joel really grounded the game like that, though. That that's where I, that's where I kind of. Joel tried for the one tournament. Chaos. I guess Chaos had a disappointing season for real. Uh, and I feel like to me, Joel is like, he didn't really try the same way. Like I said, I didn't want to. I didn't want to compete anymore after what happened. And uh. Especially not this year. I had to take that break and uh, really see if, you know, going to EA events like that is in my future. So, I feel like Joel kind of kept that Joel kind of kept that same type of vibe. I know he tried, uh, I believe he tried the Draft Champions Tournament. Uh, so, I, I don't know if, if Joel really went all out. So, that's how I feel about, that's how I feel about, um... Not putting Joel on his list. Like, he didn't even really come across me as somebody that really grinded the game like he has in the past. And for me, like I said, I put Joke. Joke, obviously, he made... No, he didn't make the Man Bowl. He made... He won the Browns Club Series. I, I just feel like Joke is another player that should make a top 16. He should make a top 16. If there's a top 16 tournament, he should make it. And he'll tell you that I should make a top 16 tournament. So, for me, I feel like the, the the season was disappointing for him, especially, I mean, he's signed to probably, well, Journey's on complexity. Joke is out here on Echo Fox, which is probably the second biggest, well, Luminosity's problem. But he signed to a major org. For him to not make the final 16, it was disappointing. Problem, the GOAT, I mean, the best player ever. Uh, the biggest thing with me with Problem was that he didn't even try to get in the last chance qualifier. You know, it, it just, that, that was the big, because... You're going to have years where, you know, you, everything doesn't fall forward for you. Everything doesn't work out. You know, even if you're the best player, like we talked about Clef, man, you can be a top 10 player and just have some bad breaks and not make it. Uh, for me, for me, the problem was just not even getting into that, not even getting into that last chance qualifier. got to be super disappointing, man. you, you got to give yourself every chance you can. And he's a good enough player, especially an online single elimination. I don't care how... If he hasn't played the game, if he's not labbed up on the game, he can get into a game with somebody and give him hell. So for him not to get a, yeah, I agree. The young boys really are hell, really. Um, but I, like I said, I, I feel like Problem can go ahead and compete with anybody, especially in a one game win at all. I put Juan up here because I feel like Juan grinds the hell out of the game. I really do. I don't know if you guys really know Juan. Like, Juan isn't, like you said, Serious Mo. You say Joel. Like, Juan isn't that type of name. But, I, I mean, I know Juan. And most of us know Juan. Juan grinds the hell out of Madden. And for me, uh, he definitely disappointed. Probably, I, I'll tell you what. Juan has a, had a pretty disappointing MCS, really. I mean, t- Juan was the Niners club series before club series was good. You know, although he did get cheated last year real bad. He could have made a run in that. So that's how I feel about Juan being in there. I, I think as far as somebody that plays as much as him, and I think Juan is pretty good at the game. So for him to not make any events, anything, that was rough for me as far as him. And then we have the the young boy Allen. Cause I I fell, for, I fell for it, chat. And I don't know if you guys fell for it too, man. I, I done played Allen. I said, Allen's pretty damn good, right? Everybody's telling me Allen's tough. Allen's the man. He's the next. I'll probably put Allen in like the top top 18 of my Madden draft. Man, is he the most overrated man player in the, in the history of, of one season of Madden. 
Oh, man, I heard these young boys, Allen and Henry, uh, it's just, I, they, it was just let down. I was just let down as a fan of men, as a fan of, you know, young talent, you know, that really love men. Allen let me down, man. And I'm going to say, pro, I'm going to say Henry let me down, but I think Henry could only, could only compete in one tournament. Honestly, it's a lot of people I wanted to put on the most disappointing list. Definitely wanted to put Joe Rice up there, disappointed. I almost put Kiv up here, but he made Kiv made too much shit for me to put him up here. But I was just disappointed that he didn't have the runs that he he's used to having, or you know, because I just feel like Kiv is a top five player. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like disappointing is, is really like I guess it, it's got to compare to the rest of your career, really. Because obviously Juan didn't make shit, but I don't expect him to win a belt. He just disappoints me because he doesn't make shit. You know what I'm saying? That's all. And Allen, exactly. We keep hearing Allen's name, but we never see him win a game. I mean, this is true. Ever since I think ever since he beat Problem, he kind of he thought his life, he thought that was it. He thought that he got a belt for beating Problem in clubs, but he didn't. Like I said, Problem, just because he didn't give himself a chance, pretty much gets that, uh, gets that award for the year, which is a bad one, I guess. Best offense. This is hard for me. Now, you guys can talk to me about who you think is the best offensive player. I feel like Kevin Ghost are, are probably the two. When I think about offense, Kevin Ghost probably are the first people that I, I, that pop into my mind. You know, uh, and Kane's, but I feel like this, and Kev, Kev says Kane should be on the list. I could agree with that, but when I think about Keynes, I think about what offense does he run? You know what I'm saying? I feel like Keynes at one point was in trips, then in the man bowl he was in bunch, you know what I mean? So I feel like maybe offensive player, but maybe he didn't have his uh, the same offense. Because I really thought about this was the hardest one to me because every, everybody's kind of so similar. And I put Jay Wall because it was trips tight end, although Jay Wall was, I don't want to say... I don't know how to explain Jay Wall's year, really. Was he a breakout player or was he a disappointing player? But the reason I put Jay Wall is because I feel like I needed a trips representative. And I feel like of all the trips I've played, I feel like Jay Wall is probably the best of mixing up a bunch of things, man. Uh, so that's why I had. I, I, I get best, the best offense. You know, I feel like when his offense, yeah, so I, it's tough. Yeah, so this, for me, this was a tough, because when you say who had the best offense, it wasn't, I don't think it's really announced. It's really as clear cut as it could be. And some serious to me, I put him on here because he by far had the most unique offense. And he, I felt like he really executed really well in the games that I watched. I really did. I thought he was really, he really got, um, executed really well in those games. And another thing I will tell you guys, I will tell you it was really hard for me not to put Journey in here. Yeah. But, I, and as a man that runs the Saints book, I, I watched Journey play so closely. And I, I, I just don't explain it. Like, I feel like but he runs, he mixes in the runs well, and he was busting those runs. Like, I, I was sitting there watching, like, man, if I could just bust some of those runs for 80 yards, you know, and, and I, I've played Journey so much and watched Journey so much, I don't think Journey is the same type of offensive player as Kiffer goes. But, man, it's hard to argue with the... Uh, it's hard to argue with the results that Journey had on offense that whole tournament, or, or pretty much the whole year. You know, it's really hard to argue with that. So for me, it's really a tough topic to say who has the best offense, you know. And, and it's, so the reason I put them, like I said, Ghost and Kid for me, as far as offensive player, uh, calling the right plays, making the right reads, those guys are probably one A and one B. So that's why I put those guys up there. And it's not necessarily anything I saw this year. It's just uh, those two guys really have uh, what you gonna call it. They really have. You know the reads and the, and the schemes and the play calling down pat, Jay Wall because of the trips, man. The trips tight end obviously was probably the second best offense this year, 
behind Bunch, and it was really effective, and I felt like he was the best at running it. That's why I put him up in some series, just because he was so unique. But it was hard to put Journey for every... I guess I guess he probably could be up here, best offense. But for me, that was the toughest one to pick. And then we go to, to um, whatchamacallit. Then with, yeah, and that and Dirk says in the chat, man, he was using a ninety-seven one running back versus versus you know shitty DBs at linebacker. Well, that I mean that's his choice. Everybody had that choice, so you can't fault him for that. So essentially, I was just saying is he outsmarted everybody, but uh, it definitely worked out. But that was offense. Then we go to defense. This was hard for me too because I once again I feel like who played the best defense. I really, there was one person I wanted to put in my, my four nominees are Pavin, Journey, Spoto, and Clef. The, the, I will tell you this, chat, YouTube, everybody. The person I wanted to put on here, and you guys call me crap, I wanted to put K-Mac on this list. K-Mac had no success. He, he lost Arizona Cardinals final. But he was the first person we saw in that over G shedding the hell out of people. Then he came with the 5-2 that was really good. You know, he was the first one to really start rocking 5-2. So, for me, K-Mac, seriously, as far as, like, people that really, I don't want to say came up with defenses, but really put them on the scene, I feel like um, K-Mac, K-Mac really was on top of shit, really. I, I feel like he didn't execute, and he didn't play good against uh, T. Davis in the Cardinals Club Series, but he definitely played great defense. And then, obviously, Pavin won the whole belt because of that 3-3-5. Uh, Spoto, what he did to Skimbo in two games, uh, and what he did in that whole run of tournament minus the last game, I thought that's pretty much why I put him up there. He won games just on defense. He wasn't a... Uh... Yeah, CC was the first one rocking 5-2. 5-2 was on Madden Turf in, in August, and I told him the guys it was stupid. No, I just really thought K-Mac played good defense a lot this year, you know, I mean, and, and for me, when, when I thought about the best defensive player, I thought about who did I see running these defenses first, when have I watched, when have I watched a game and be like, this dude is just bagging the hell out of people, I, and K-Mac versus T. Davis, T. Davis won the game, but T. Davis didn't want any parts of passing the ball versus him, T. Davis won because K-Mac just couldn't score or move the ball at all and do interceptions, but... Uh, T. Davis couldn't pass at all. Every time he passed back, he was sacked. He, it, it, and all he did was run draw. He actually bust two draws, I believe, for touchdowns. Uh, and and that was one game that I watched. Actually, both games I watched in MCS, uh, minus Spoto and, and Skimbo, just that that bag. But I remember, and I, y'all going to be crazy, Kiv's defense, when the over G man up everybody, I, I'll tell you, Kiv had T. Davis absolutely... He couldn't get a soul open. And if we go back today, I know Kiv don't want to think about that game. But it was like the first quarter, he he just... T. Davis couldn't find anybody open. And this was like when that, that cross man, man up everybody, over G shit. And it was killing T. Davis. And for some reason, Kiv just like switched his defense in the middle of the game. Like I'm telling T. Davis dropped back and they, everybody was covered, blanketed. And that was another time, I think, it was probably the first half of that game... Kid versus uh, T. Davis. And T. Davis was like, you couldn't find nobody. Yeah, I, I really I really thought that uh, the man up, the cross man defense uh, out of over G. So when I think about, so this, so what it came down to me is Journey's the best defensive player. That That's why he wins. He's just wild. He's just, that's, I, so to me, this whole topic wasn't even a discussion because Journey just wins. Like, let's just, let's, we can pretty much all agree on that. But then I thought about who should be in here. And to me, I, you guys watch Clef play so much. He plays great defense, kind of basic, but really great defense. And I put Spoto because of that run he made. I thought his defense won him every game, pretty much. And Pavin won a whole tournament off defense, pretty much. It was really good. But then I thought, like I said, I thought about K Mac and I did think about Kiv. As far as the over G that he was running, that I, I thought after I picked Kiv to win the club series, after watching the first half of him versus T. Davis, I thought, man, Kid, this is the easiest pick I've ever made. You know, so that that's pretty much where my best defense came in was those uh those four guys. But like I said Drenny wins that, no doubt about it. 
uh, that's the reason he's successful. He, he's a defensive player, you know. That's pretty much our goal. So, what are some other topics? Now, we I talked about plays. I talked about plays, and I wish I could really find the plays that I want to talk about. Uh, because for me, the offensive player of the year. I, I mean, what do you guys think? Is what I'm asked as far as the offensive player of the year. For me, I, I feel like. It, I'm not going to say it's the best offensive play, the, you know, the greatest offensive play in the world. But for me, I feel like Kratobin won a belt on a walk-off in overtime. I, I, I don't say it was the best. I, I, I don't want to say it's the best play, but to win a belt on a walk-off in overtime is pretty damn crazy. I mean, the best non-bunch, non-trip, that's got to be Drenny, really. Uh, D. Croft, I mean, D. Croft is pretty much the, I mean, yeah, <laughs> it's hard to really argue with him being that, uh, being that person, being as far as the best stick, uh, but I will tell you, as somebody that, <sighs> yeah, well, you fucked Kiv up about seven times, D. Croft fucked Kiv up about seven times and then laid down, the biggest laid down was going to be a topic. It really was. It was going to be a topic in the game. Or what topic? The biggest lay down. And we can talk about that chat. You guys can help me. What was the biggest lay down that somebody had? But I, I will tell you, I, I hate to keep talking about Skimbo, but I do. Skimbo's user is really underrated. Because y'all, if y'all ever played him or watched him play, everything he does is super basic. But he, he does have a really good user. And I, I'll tell you, another person that y'all going to think I'm crazy Vilma has really good user on defense. Offense, is nah, he fights. But his user on defense, uh, Vilma's user on defense is, is is as good as anybody's. As far as stopping the run, as far as lurking. That, I, and we talk about another person that's super, uh, super basic, but just gets it done all because of the user and everything. That's pretty much, uh, in a nutshell, is Vilma pretty much. Yeah, that the biggest lay down should have been. Oh shoot! I'm trying to find this play. The biggest lay down was Joe Rice versus um. Joe Rice versus some serious. Probably was the biggest lay down. Uh. There, it has to be single elimination. No, I'm just talking about, they don't talk about Skimbo's user. Like, Ghost laying down versus Lil' Man. I didn't think Ghost would be Lil' Man. Or I didn't think Lil' Man would be Ghost, so that's a possibility for sure. I want to show you guys what I think is the best play. And I, I, I know it's coming up here somewhere in this one right here. No, I think it's, I got to put it on this one. This is Ghost versus Journey. I think if you guys watch, you guys have seen this play. I believe it happens on this drive. This is why Ghost won won the, the this this is why Ghost made a run in this tournament. Like, as much as I had him one of the best offense, he literally beat Figgy. One, he couldn't score a lick versus Figgy, and he beat him because of these picks. And I believe it. I don't know if it's gonna happen right here. Nah, I think it's on the tight end flat pass. But he clicks on and picks it off. He got two of these, both in a Figgy game, and he got this one versus Journey. We talked about Journey having the best year, being the best player of the year. You're in a game versus Ghost. Obviously, he's two top ten players, without question. And uh, Journey is down by three. You see him. He looks calm. He's all right. All he needs to go is go get three points to tie the game. He's running the clock right now because he wants us to make the, either the last drive of the game or the last drive of regulation. Kick a field goal and tie it if he has to. He damn sure doesn't want to give Ghost the ball back in this fourth quarter. And I don't know exactly when, and it might have been before this. I might be asleep, and it might, but I don't think it is. I want to say it's like right here, and then it kind of ends the game, pretty much for Ghost to go ahead and win. Yeah, it might be right here. Todd Gurley at tight end. That play right there. Against Drenny, pretty much takes it back in the field goal range. That play alone was ridiculous. So you talk about defensive play of the game by the year.
That had to be. That was crazy. So to me, chat, that was when I thought about when I thought about plays. Best play of the year defensively. That was that was that that was it as far as I'm concerned. The, the, the titty slap. That might have been a titty slap play. Turbo Jeff for special team. Oh, the, the pitch back. Now, that wasn't crazy, though. Shout out to TK with the sub. Three-month streak, man. Uh, Yeah, that, like I said, that was the best defense. Do you guys have any player that y'all would put over that for best defensive player of the year? For me, that was crazy. Uh, And like I said, best offensive play for me was the walk-off. Kratobin over Journey. The walk-off on a, on a long touchdown like that. Make a one cut. Just go upfield. Score a touchdown. was pretty crazy. Any, I don't think there's any belt that's been won on a walk-off overtime touchdown. So that's pretty much how it goes. Yeah, save man 19. You know what I'm saying? We might have to come out with the save man 20s. But the save man 19, I don't know if it worked. I don't know if it worked. So we might have to retire these, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, both plays against Journey. We talk about the best player of the year, but he gave up the best defensive play and the best offensive play. Uh... So, and then we talk about, uh, we wanted to talk about the worst haircuts. You, shout out to my man TNT with the sub, four months, man. We want to talk about worst haircuts, worst swag. I, I think EA's kind of eliminated people from wearing swag, like having swag, or I don't want to say having swag, I want to say more so, you know, have, picking their own clothes so much. They've kind of really limited a lot of that stuff, you know what I'm saying? And I, I, I hope you guys agree or disagree. And as a, a a bald man, I can definitely clown everybody's haircuts. I'm saying, J Wall did have, and we see J Wall in the chat. J Wall did have the f six year old haircut. Ice just has like a, a buzz cut. Ice isn't up there. Nah, Clef had a scully on in 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 Florida. Yeah, see. Like I said, we can see J Wall. J Wall definitely has the uh, the, the seven year old haircut. Like it's, if if y'all really, t I guess they're talking about other seven year old girls. Nah. So yeah, J Wall definitely has the eight year old. That's why I'm just gonna call the eight year old. Like you pretty much just go out there. You know what I'm saying? You just want to go out there and you just want to just rock that. You know what I'm saying? The, the, this is the J-Wall. You know, just just bang. We're just going to rock it. No product. He's really eight years old. He's got, he's got like the beginning of a mustache. You see, like, just he got just the smallest little, like, he might be the type of person to only have a mustache. Like, he might never get, like, a beard. It might only be mustache. All the way up there. So, he... I don't think he wins the award, but J-Wall might... He might get up there for worse hair. I don't know if he was in the top four. So, you say, who can I put in the top four? As I'm looking through here, it's definitely a... It's definitely a lot of... Candidates, and and I will tell you, Crush, Crush is a different type of candidate, because I felt like his hair was a little crazy in the first live event. What was it, Club Series, when he did the leg crossover on Joke? He really, it, it, it definitely was different, you know. And then once we got to this Madden Bowl, then he took it to another level. Like it wasn't just. Like, the crush went to another level. There was no... First, he had to flip up, you know, the regular flip up at the, the Madden Bowl or at the uh, Madden... What was it? 
the man's challenge. You know what I'm saying? And, and the crazy thing about the worst hair thing is that all the people that had the worst hair, but whether it's Joe Rice or Crush, they all kids and boys. Now, Kiv has the best hair. I don't know how you allow your boys to just be out here struggling. That That's pretty much, like, how do you allow this? You know, how is it an option for your, for your team to struggle? Y'all help each other with man so much. Kiv got to give them a little little grooming advice. You know what I'm saying? Like, just, you got, I'm telling you, you guys got to, if you have hair, go with the natural comb over. You don't got to do much. Just the boo-boo basic, maybe like a little, like, you know, like Ryan Reynolds has, or the Ben Affleck. Crush is just a little, Crush is just a little bit too wild. Like, it's no need to get that wild with the, uh, with the comb over, the flip up swag. You know I'm saying? He put a lot of product. Like, as much as, Kid put a lot of product on his whole hair, but Crush put that shit just in the front like the front part. I'm saying just that part is the part. Like it literally all the product that Kiv put to keep his hair like that, Crush put that just in these little five strands right here. Like he don't he don't use it on the whole he just uses it on the five strands to go straight up, not sideways. He don't go for the sideways look. I'm saying he don't he don't go for that. That's not his look. That's not his vibe. Crush vibe is straight up. You know what I'm saying? It's just straight up no twist to it. And I told you, this is what's crazy about the crush. You know, it's crazy about the, the crush is you see all this dry. This is just no product right here. You know what I'm saying? No product. Then this shit, bruh, he layered that shit on right here. This 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 straight up, this wall, this the steel curtain right here. This, this ain't, ain't, man, listen. I'm telling you, kid, you got to get these kids... You got to get these kids. It, just take the comb. Comb it over. I'm saying? You might need to trim it a little bit. You know? Like, this, this can't be it. What DMs are we on? I have so many windows open right now. So, that... So... Wesley is the worst, though. I, I, I can honestly tell you, and it's going to take me a while to find. I, I think I can honestly tell you that Wesley is probably the worst. Because cause Crush, I will give Crush this, man. He got his own swag. That's his haircut. It's not another man walking around trying to rock the Crush. Crush didn't steal that haircut from anybody else. No, that's his haircut. You know what I'm saying? You can't tell him anything about that because that's his haircut. You know, but then we go with, with Joe Rice. You know what I'm saying? Joe Rice is a young, impressionable kid. And that's why I don't really like clowning the young, impressionable kids. Because, you know, they're going to do what their friends tell them, you know? Like, kid tells them all this stuff. Oh, yeah. that Yeah, Crush. Maybe kid did help Crush out. Hold on. Maybe kid did Crush. I, I got... Damn, Crush. It'd be your own homies, Crush. I didn't even find this picture. I didn't put this picture up. But man, I don't know. This might be over the, the gel up in the front. How do we go from this to the gel up in the front? Like how Jeez chat. That's rough. So in between the kid, what happened? I wanna know, like, did you guys go back like all right, Chris, we gonna have your Madden game is tough. You ready to play. You got the AirPods. But you got the, like, Crush in this picture has the haircut like he's, like, 45. This is, like, the 45, I don't leave the house. You know what I'm saying? The no facial hair. This is a pedophile-ass haircut. Chat. You know what I'm saying? How, how do we go from that? Because, honestly, when you look back, when you really, when you really look at this, like, for me... The the I, listen that little spiky steel curtain haircut that shit is way over this, bro. This is somebody. This is a balding forty year old haircut right here. That's what this is, bro. This this. I'm, I mean, that's just that's just, man. 
So he he went through all the pictures. The thing about it that's crazy to me, you go through all the pictures of haircuts. Like when your hair is this damn long, you can get any haircut you want. Like dead ass. Yo, when your hair is this long, you can get any hair. You can go in that bitch and say, I want this, that, and the third. And there's nothing they can tell you we can't do it. You have so much hair on your head. So of all the pictures, and now, guys, don't act like you're too old to go back. Maybe this is a, like, you go into the barbershop where they have all the pictures on the wall, like different hairstyles that you can get. Like, and somebody, I want number 11, or I want that one in the corner, I want this. So of all the haircuts he can get, he chose the steel curtain spike up in the front. That's hell. Oh, this y'all gonna hurt in the wind, Clef. This, this, this is not a roller coaster haircut, B. But that steel curtain, that that little gel, when you gel it up in the front, bitch, you gonna go through a roller coaster. If 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 you put that much gel in your face, in, right here, you know what I'm saying? If you, chat, if you get all this gel right here like this, you know what I'm saying? His joint was like, bruh. His shit was like like a whole controller up this bitch. Like this. You you going through the roller coaster. You go through the roller coaster with your head down. Don't feel any wind. Whew. That's how you go through the roller coaster. The comb over, this wild, this Uncle Fester comb over. Bro, this Uncle Fester comb over. That jump, you can't go through the roller coaster. I'm saying, but that's still curtain, boy. That's still curtain is something serious. There it is. But we I don't know if I hate the Wesley. I, I I don't know, chat. You guys gotta talk to me about Wesley. Cause I don't really know and this is oh, this is the game against Nick the Beast. I feel like he's stuck in between Crush and Kiv. You know what I mean? Like that's where Wesley is. Like if Crush went to the barber and said, I want the Kiv, he would come out looking like Wesley. That would be it. What I don't understand about Wesley is we have the, 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 like, see, and this is where Kid really failed his homies. Like, I feel like, I honestly, chat, and I'll, I'll tell you guys, man, I feel like, let me see, I feel like this, I don't even know if they have those games. I don't think they had those games. I'd have to go all the way back to the year one. This is how I feel about Wesley. Wesley is between because this man listen crush it as much as we clown and crush on his chat chat he's earned a lot of respect for me because when he picked his own hairstyle he was rocking the I don't care about life hairstyle before he got the spike up in the front crush got a lot of balls I'll be honest he he really he's he, he's all about crush you know what I'm saying he played physical sports he played physical on the man field he got physical haircuts listen that that's the type of person that that I respect, Crush. But Wesley really, he I, I promise, he didn't go to a barber. He he had a picture of Kiv, but if he had a picture of Kiv and went to the barber, it might have been a little bit. But they would have left some hair on the side. But he took this picture of Kiv and he took it to his aunt or whoever in his family cuts hair, his little cousin that just graduated from beauty school. He didn't take it to a real barber. He took it to like an amateur trying to become a barber. And that's why they cut his whole shit on the side. Like he has like I like it is this is crazy to me almost. That if somehow I don't know how I could do this. Like, let's just do this. Let's do this. Yeah, we can do this. If you cut off oh no. If somehow you can cut off the top part. Like, he almost got a regular haircut. Like, it's just a regular bowl cut or a regular, you know, buzz cut. You know what I'm saying? It's just regular. But then you got this swoop. And this swoop, because this swoop is serious. Like, this swoop, this swoop takes no prisoners. This swoop is really, you're talking about how hair can do in the wind? Bro, the wind is going to tear this haircut up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they said his hair looks like Kim's in-game coach. <laughs> Yo, that's crazy. This this is wild. I saw, but to, that's why I feel like when I saw Skimbo talking shit, right? Bon, you up, man? I did have a swoop. 
because I had the swoop wasn't bad. And I can't my man balling you up has a regular white guy swoop. Not even a swoop, just like a regular cut. You know? It's not really it you don't notice it. The key with a man's haircut, let me tell you something, fellas. Unless you're a flamboyant, you know, Odell Beckham type, the key to a man's haircut is to not be noticed. Like, nobody wants to notice your haircut. You know what I'm saying? Wow, this is on YouTube for... What tournament was this? Oh, you weren't in this tournament, though. What? I don't even know what I'm looking at. Well, I said, what? No... I don't know, seriously, you, as a man, you don't want anybody, you don't want anybody to notice your haircut. You know? That's all. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I see you made the man challenge. Oh, yeah. Didn't you get pop popped? Oh, so are we saying Wesley man challenge Wesley is better than... Ooh. Oh, my God. This is kind of crazy. This might be this might some of my man fist magic in here. So it might be a little different. What's you went three and all groups in the man challenge? So you probably got a bigger gripe than Clef do as far as man bowl. Yeah, this okay. Now I yeah, I see you you get a little more length in the back. Pause. Why right, I'm done. Yeah, I'm missing the Sixers game. I just said some real questionable shit. This ain't no seventeen to one. Shut up. Raptors up seventeen to one. He got a little more length in the back. Dang, he caught that pass. The swoop, there it is. No, he see he still Wesley a little dupe. He's a little goober looking, huh, chat? But anyway, like I said, so worst haircut. Chat, who we gonna go with? Who who's gonna get the uh who's gonna get the nod? It, I think it has to really be between Crush and Joe Rice. And I wanna get to my point. I've been trying to say is that when I saw Skimbo capping, I felt like I let him down. I felt like I felt like I let him down because that's my job in the squad is the cap. You know, that's what I do best. Really, I, I really talk shit better than I play Madden, which isn't hard to do. But I definitely, that's my job. Between Bugs is not going to cap at all. I don't know why. Bugs is very, because he eats just grass, he's very like, I, I don't know what's wrong with Bugs. It's like, he's very sensitive. He's very emotional. He doesn't really cap. You know, so to me, is <laughs> are we going crush or are we going? Does crush win? Crush has two in the race though. I, crush might have to win because he has two in the race. Like there's no other man with two, two, two options. That's pretty crazy. But he might get. Does he get credit for two options? Or honestly, as much as we talk about, he might get most. He might he might get the most improved. This this is an improvement. You know what I'm saying? This is definitely uh he definitely improved, right, Chat? He's got to get credit for that. If he just gets another year, another year of hairstyles, you know I'm saying it's definitely going to change for him. You know, he's definitely going to be on the way up. It's going to be a different vibe. He went from the Uncle Fester. Now he got the uh, the steel curtain look. So I, I feel like he's definitely been improved. He's definitely on the right path. So I I don't know if I give it to Wesley or I give it to, to Crush. Crush, they was killing you, man. I ain't say nothing bad about you. Crush, I, I you could ask the chat, Crush. I didn't say nothing bad. They were killing you. Me, myself, I, I, was, I said Wesley still got worse hair. That was pretty much my... Uh, 
that was pretty much my input to the whole story. Was that I felt like it wasn't that bad, and I felt like you improved over the years. So Crush was worst hair and most improved hair. That's I mean that's not bad. You I mean you can take that for what it is. It's really not the worst situation, you know. Nothing wrong with getting the worst, uh, being the worst, but then also show that you're on for improvement. Crush is still a young man. You know I'm saying so in a couple. A couple years, who knows what it's gonna be like, you know? But to go from that to this, I mean that's that that's chat, you gotta just admit, that's pretty impressive. It looked like he even put a little dye in there too. Look that looked like orangish brownish, and then we went with the strong black, you know, wall, the black wall up there. You know what I'm saying? That 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 this is the, like crush. What were you thinking before? Like Yeah, crush definitely Wesley got the worst hair. Crush got improved. It was, it was looking rough for him, but it definitely got improved, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he went all natural at first. Yeah, but I don't have any hair. I wish I had Crush's hair. I don't have any, you know what I'm saying? Oh, we, we got a DM from last year, Crush? Hold on. Last year, Crush might be wild. Oh, what the hell happened? This is the most regular cr All right. I need to know what happened in your life. <laughs> Chat. <laughs> Crush has the regular <laughs> haircut. <laughs> Just the <laughs> This is when he got the... Uh, this one he looked like... What's his name? Sid from Toy Story. This is it. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what happened that we went through these, through all these different changes in life. Crush needs more live events, Crush. We need Crush in more live events. It, it, it's confirmed. He's definitely needed at more live events. If there's any way I can get all three of these on the pic, on the screen, I, I am a, 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 a podcast god. I mean, we need to get Crush in more live events, bro. He really did, like... God damn it. Oh. Crush need more live events. It's confirmed. Like, how, how... How is this in between these two? Like, how does this... What? Crush... I need answers on what happened. <laughs> what the... What girl did you wrong? Bruh. What girl had you like this? I need to meet her. <laughs> Look, this is the day of the breakup. Look, he's sick. <laughs> this is a year later. Bruh, then he transformed. Then he finally moved on and transformed. You know what I'm saying? Then he transformed. No, he don't need it. He got hair. Shit. I mean, he, that's a, he, got, he got hair. Like this is rough, man. He, crush more live events for Crush. I mean, he would he no nah, his hands was on the hip. He was a little flabbergasted at somebody taking this picture. Yeah, he got a new girl here. You know what I'm saying? He got he got a Mexican or a, a Latino, a Latina. That's what he got. That's why he got the the wall. He got he got new swag. He got a different hoodie, fully zipped. You know he as you see, Crush is a fully zipped hoodie type of guy. <laughs> Crush don't go with the half unzip. He don't go with the ha the full unzip, the three quarter. His shit zipped to the brim. <laughs> like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, he not letting no draft get in. He just <laughs> high and tight. And the high and tight went with this hair, bro. I'm telling you. Oh, my God. This shit is, I didn't even know it, bro. He definitely high and tight with every zipper. This is a whole jacket. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, y'all killing me. He's not letting any of this trap. Bro, the full zip. That's that's crazy, though. I need, I need, uh, Pavin had a transfer, transformation. I feel like he just wore like a scully. 
in Madden, uh, what year was it? Madden, um, Madden 18. I feel like he just wore a scully. It was just a sc That's what I remember. That's too funny. The full zip chat. The full zip. Full zip hoodie for Crush is crazy. It really was. Nah. He had the, he had the wall back then. I swear to God, he got a Latina girl. But chat, all jokes aside, man. The Joel mustache. Joel was a 16-year-old with a 36-year-old mustache. What are we looking at? Who the hell is this? Jiggy J Rod? Who are these people? Big George. Oh, let me show y'all what I'm looking at right now. Oh, there he is. Uh, my, I don't want to kill chaos, but why you don't have any hair? I feel like that's the Amish look where you don't have no hair like above your, like you just have all neck hair. Like how do you have no mustache and like no chin? It's just all neck hair. Mine would look the same forever. Who? damn. Oh, this the boy that, hey, is balling you up still in here? Hold on. Tell me Kent's still in here. I need a good laugh. Hold on. These are the best videos I've ever. Hey, Kent, balling you up. This is the boy that beat balling you up to go to uh, Cincinnati Bengals. <laughs> we did it. This is the balling you up lost to. I know he ain't here. <laughs> No, this is not not chaos, Kent. Balling you up, Kent. <laughs> Everything else is gravy. <laughs> and he flooded balling you up. Hey, <laughs> Cam. Yo, these are the best. Is this the skins? Oh, he, he act like he's not in here now. Look. My man, Prime Time. Yo, I need more of these videos. Deliverance, man. If that's not a woman's jersey, chat, 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 if this isn't a woman's cut jersey, I'm, I'm going to scroll down, start scrolling up, like, if this ain't woman's cut, I'm tripping, bro, this is what, like, bruh, is this not the woman's cut? Y'all just gave me this, like, what the hell? Oh shit! Hold up. <laughs> oh my god! Pop got himself a little Latina too. All y'all getting little Mexican girls. Watch, man. They ain't gonna end that well for y'all. They crazy. Y'all growing up before our eyes, chat. I seriously, that everybody really growing up before our eyes. Oh, it's all spot me. Rest in peace. The crazy little person, man. I mean. It's just all about getting a little Spanish girlfriend, that's all. Pavin wasn't talking to bitches, right? like, went, nah. He wasn't in the girls when he had this haircut. The girls wasn't on the radar, really, when he had this haircut, nah. I mean, how do you go from, oh my gosh. I'm telling you, he, he started talking to some chick and was like, all right. See, this is all I thought he was. Hold on. I thought... <laughs> Yo, 
Yo, that nigga got proud looking super old. Uh, th yo, the Scully with the headphones is crazy. The Scully with the headphones is crazy. Yeah, but Poppin definitely like. Yeah, he might. He, I don't think it's as bad as Crush. I don't know. Pornhub? Yeah, I'll be in Pornhub. Y'all don't be in Pornhub? Yo, if y'all shit don't... If you type pain that doesn't go to Pornhub, like, what the hell? Like, what? I mean, I don't, I don't see what the problem is here, boys. Nah, them, them, nah, they they they're playing with the league. They're playing too much shit. I mean, what the hell? Not nah, my Pornhub man. Clef, how many times do I had to ro roast Clef's hairline, dude? And he had a hat on, I think, every move, like. Like shit, like who, like bro, I'm almost 32 and be 32 in like three days. Like, I'm 32 years old. Y'all don't watch? Nah, man, I, I haven't paid for porn. I'm chilling. <laughs> it's crazy. I, I I pay for some ass before I pay for porn. But hold on, wait. <laughs> this was needed podcast. We gotta end it. It's going really dark right now. It's getting really dark. We gotta cut it, but it's getting too crazy. I didn't want to roast too many people. We wanted we talked about the reward or awards for the year, man. Journey best player, journey best defense, best offense. I think Kev won, but I I don't know who could win best offense. Honestly, you could probably put Journey in that mix too. Breakout player, I gave it to Pav and he blew up, but some serious was there too. Uh most disappointing was problem, obviously. Myself, I was disappointed this year. I was very upset. And depressed watching everybody have fun, make money, play Madden. And I was I did not choose to. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate you guys. I really appreciate you guys supporting the podcast, man. Uh, it isn't all fun that I roast you guys. I know Crush is a good sport. I've been roasting him for other things for a reason. Uh, it is all in fun. I love all you guys, man. I feel like this year was crazy. But I honestly feel like when I look back on it, I've become closer to everybody in the man community this year. You know, it's definitely... um. Definitely, ultimately, we made the best out of it. And that's what we can say is the man community definitely made the best out of this year. And I do feel like I'm closer to all you guys. And everything I say and make fun of you guys, Pavin had a mop cut. Crush had four different haircuts in one year. Wesley, shit is crazy. I, it's all in love, man. You guys are my friends. You guys are my motivation to continue to do this. And I enjoy talking to you guys, busting your balls. I don't even have any hair. And it's a lot of other things that I can say about myself. Uh, and I will continue to do that. And if you can't make fun of yourself, man, you can never uh, make fun of other people. So I really appreciate you guys coming by. If you're on YouTube, please hit the like button. Please comment on who you have winning these awards. Also, man, what's your haircut choice right now, man? Because, I mean, as a man, there's really not that many haircut options. So let me know where you're rocking is your haircut right now. Uh, if you're on SoundCloud, any other platform, man, please like, comment, whatever you're going to do on whatever platform you're on. If you're in the chat, put some hennies in the chat. If you want to check these out live Tuesday, 7 p.m., find out who we're roasting next week.